Good morning, Pieces and Sapphos! Good morning! Are you re ready to worship the Lord today? Can I invite you to stand up if you believe that our God is relentless and He gives us never-ending love. Amen? Amen? Can we put our hands like this? Let's celebrate God's love tonight, today. Valentine's Day, may nakita akong post ng friend ko. Tapos, wala siyang kadate. So, sabi niya, ang isa-celebrate na lang niya ay 
Singles Awareness Day. Yan. Or in short, SAD. <laughs> so why am I sharing this to you? Maybe you've experienced sadness in your life. Maybe sadness from your relationship, your relationship with your spouse, or you feel that you failed as a parent between your relationship with your child, or, or as a child, you feel that you failed your parents. And sometimes, we feel like in that sad moment of our life, we feel that we fail God. Na, minsan nagpa-promise tayo kay Lord, Lord, I promise tomorrow I will be a better man or a better person than who I am today. But we end up failing our promise to God. But here's the good news, brothers and sisters. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, it says there, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Because of God's grace, even though we fail with our promise, He gives us new opportunity. He keeps on loving us. He keeps on blessing us. And He keeps on hugging us, making us feel that He really, really loves us, that we are important. So right now, let's bow down our heads and pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, Thank you for your grace. That even if sometimes we fail with our promise, Lord, you give us new opportunity to love, to forgive, and to understand, Lord. Thank you for making us new every morning. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. to worship our God and surrender to Him.
Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's give God a big, big clap of praise. Good morning! morning. Can you greet the people around you and tell them, good morning? morning? And we give a big hand to our worship team. And how many of you have enjoyed your Valentine's Day? Parang wala masyado na enjoy. Parang kakaunti lang. At siguro iba pa for next week pa, na? Hindi pa, hindi pa this week. Mayroon akong tinanong. May mga tinanong ko. Sabi ko, kamusta yung Valentine's mo? Sabi nung no, isa, sabi niya, Brad, parang rainbow. Sabi ko, wow, bakit parang rainbow? Kasi po makulay. Wow, ang ganda, no? Makulay. Parang talagang in love. Tapos sabi nung isa, ako po Brad, parang Jollibee. Sagot, Jollibee, bida ang saya. 
Oh, masaya. Ikaw ba? Okay ang Valentine. Si isa naman sabi niya, para pong algebra. Sabi ko, bakit algebra? Complicated. <laughs> Tapos isa, ito yung matindi. Sabi ko, ikaw? Sabi niya, para pong batanggas. Ano batanggas? Hala eh. <laughs> Tapos isa, mas matindi. Para pong Christmas. Ay, bakit parang Christmas? Masaya ba? Ganong kasaya? Parang Christmas? Hindi po. Napakanta po ako ng single bell, single bell, single all the way. <laughs> Kamusta ang Valentine's mo? Friends, this morning kahit wala kang Valentine's or feeling mo parang hindi masaya yung Valentine mo, I want you to be happy today. Ask me why. Because there is someone here in this place who left heaven just to show his love for you. And that person is your true Valentine. And that person's name is Jesus. Yes? Kaya kung parang malungkot siyang katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, be happy. Because your Valentine is here. I would like to welcome our first timer. Do we have first timer here? Yung ayon po nakapunta sa face out mo. Ayan. Kung bago ka tas mo nga yung kamay mo so that we can see you. Do we have first timer? Ayan, meron. Welcome. This is your home now. At the end of our gathering, pwede ba kayo maimbitahan to go to that place? We want to know more about you and we want to give you something. And I would like to honor yung mga tas nga kamay ng mga nag-imbita ng kaibigan nila kahit wala sila rito. Tas lang yung kamay mga nag-imbita ng kaibigan. Ayan. Palakpakan din natin sila. Thank you for inviting your friends. These are our peace ambassador. And this morning, we're going to continue with the third serving of our series. And the title, for those who if this is your first time, the title of our series is Looking for Mr. and Miss Right. And this morning, we're going to talk about a very hard topic to give. This is one of the very hard topic na nabigay ko sa talambuhay ko, ha? And this is about disordered purity. Alam niyo na kung ba't mahirap, na? Kaya kapansin ninyo, parang konti lang ang tao ngayon. <laughs> But nonetheless, I believe that God will speak to you today. Are you ready? Let's pray our favorite prayer here in the peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet, and the light unto my path. My big message for you today is this. You are, you are more valuable than you think you are. Can you say that? This morning, I would like to zero in on one of the story about David. You know, throughout his life, si David, alam natin yan, no? if you're reading the scripture, ang dami niyang nakalaban sa buhay. When he was still young, as a shepherd boy, he fought the lion and the bear. And as a young man, ang nakalaban naman niya is si Goliath. And after winning with Goliath, as a soldier, kasi naging sundalo siya, nakalaban naman niya are the armies against the Israelite. And when he became the general of the army of the Israel, ang nakalaban naman niya si King Zol. And all these battles that he has, yung mga na- nakalaban niya, halos lahat tinalo niya talaga. You know why? Because God was pleased by His obedience and purity of heart. Kaya nananalo siya. But one day, God was so displeased with him when he lost in one of his battle. 
At ito yung battle na yan. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, and it says here, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, Anoint, I anointed you king over Israel and delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. Why did you despise the word of the Lord? By doing what is evil in his eyes. You struck down Uriah. I can say that Uriah, the Hittite, with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. And also David, he lost his battle of purity over the flesh. And yun yung makikita natin mamaya in our story. And like David, naniniwala ako, may mga tao dito, we are not also free from the battle of purity. Tama ba? Yung pagbukas mo ng internet, naku, ayan na, may tukso na agad. Tama? Pagbukas mo ng TV, naku, ayan na. Yung sinelas ang ina-advertise, pero nakabikini. Yung mga ganun. <laughs> Minsan iniisip, paano ba talaga ina-advertise ng bikini ba? O sinelas? Kasi pagkatapos ng commercial, hindi mo na alam, sinelas pala yung binibenta. Pero bikini yung nakita mo. Yung, yung ganun. So, ang daming tukso. And this morning, let us ask God to speak to our heart on how to live in purity. Are you ready? If you're ready, let's pray. Place your hand over your heart. And repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, speak to me today. I know and I believe that you want me to live with a pure heart. That's why today I'm here listening to you. Speak to my heart. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let's give God a big hand. Praise His name. You can sit down. And as you sit down, tell the person beside you, you can be pure. Thank you very much, worship team. Di ba niya napansin, may kapitbahay tayo sa kabila? Yeah. Kaya ako may na late kanina eh. Kanina nagdaalala na sila kasi I was talking to the pastor of Victory. Kasi ginagawa na yung side nila. So, they transferred here in our side. Kaya kung meron ho dito na sa Victory kayo nag-aaten, hindi ko ito yung Victory ha, nasa kabila. So, you can go now. <laughs> Baka mamaya naligaw kayo. Kasi sa dulo din yung yung victory doon sa kabilang side. Let's start. What is purity? Ayan. Gandang tanong, na? Or how can you say that a person is living in purity? Singa, singa. Mahirap talaga ang pag-usapan ng purity, ano? Singa, ano, ano, paano masasabi na yung isang tao na bubuhay in purity? They don't watch porn. Ayan, very good. Na? Ano pa? They don't commit adultery. Yeah. They don't do premarital sex. Ayan. Yan yung mga maririnig mo. Tama ba? Whenever a person was asked, yun yung pumapasok sa isip mo. Yung tao na hindi nagkukumit ng mga ganito. You know, you are right, but it's not purity. All these are action that can preserve your purity, but purity is deeper than having or not having sex. But nonetheless, we will talk about purity in the context of sex. Kaya kung meron hong bata dito, no, at dapat nasa awesome kids, papuntahin niyo muna sa awesome kids, ha? Medyo yung topic natin ngayon, medyo, it will be shocking for them. But I know this, this topic is very important to talk about. Pag-usapan sa simbahan, in, in our church, in our community. Why? Because we need 
to give handles to our young people. Alam mo yung sabi ng survey, this is survey done by Demographic Research and Development Foundation in partnership with UPPI, University of the Philippines Population Institute. Nag-survey sila, finding out saan ba nang gagaling yung information of the young people about sex. At alam mo, ito yung sabi nila doon sa survey. Let's look at this. 15 to 19 years old, sabi nila, 19% of our youth, nakukuha nila yung information about sex sa television. 18.4% of them, galing sa books. 16.3% sa internet. Medyo nakakagulat, ano? Internet, tapos 16.3% lang. Kasi hindi lahat merong internet. Tama? Yung internet ng iba, mabagal yung gumaganon pa internet siguro nung iba. And ito, ito yung malaki. The nuns. Sino yung nun? Walang information. Hindi nakukuha doon. I don't know kung saan nila nakukuha. Maybe doon sa mga kaibigan. Pero ito yung alarming ha, doon sa survey. Wala kang makikitang mention doon about the church or the family. Wala, ano? Wala. Subukan nga natin. Sino sa inyo ang nagdi-discuss ng sex sa family? Tama ang survey. <laughs> Hindi pinag-uusapan, ano? Pag sinabi nung, nung anak mo, Nay, ano po ba yung sex? Tanong mo sa tatay mo. Yung gana. Tapos yung tatay mo, Tay, ano po yung sex? Tanong mo sa nanay mo. Wala maaisagot. Now, I think that's the reason why the survey is like that. And because the topic is so taboo, it's so censored for us. That's why today, I would like to speak about sex. Kesa sa yung mga anak ninyo, alam mo yun, kung saan-saan natututunan yung sex, katulad dito sa mga programang ito. Baka mamaya, mga anak nyo, dito nila natututunan. ba? How I Met Your Mother, sa Netflix, sa YouTube, sa Two Wives. ba? Sabi nung anak mo, Nay, nakakaawa yung kabit dun sa Two Wives. Sana paglaki ko, ganyan din ako. Yung <laughs> ganun, nag-glorify yung, yung mali. Why? Kasi yun yung, ba? Sikat ngayon, yan yung uso. That's why we, we need to talk about this here. Okay? So that ngayon yung mga magulang, yung mga lolo at lola, this is also important. Why? So that when, when yung mga bata sa paligid mo, lumapit sa'yo, you, you have something to tell about them. Alright? Now, there are two world views about sex. Ano yung world view na yan? First one is legalistic view and the liberal view. Sabi nyo, legalistic, liberal Yeah. Ano yung legalistic view? Legalistic view is may mga tao, tingin nila dun sa sex, it's yucky. It's dirty. It's tabu. Hindi dapat pag-usapan. Kaya may mga pamilya na ganyan, yung pag pinag-uusapan na yun, ayaw na. And ito yung thinking nila, pag celebrate ka, ibig sabihin, pag single, blessed yung buhay mo, wala kang asawa, mas holier ka. Mas holier ka. That's why si St. Augustine, when he was still young, bago pa lang siyang convert, alam mo, ito yung sabi niya about sex and marriage. Let's, let's see. Ano yung sabi niya? I have decided that there is nothing I should avoid so much as marriage. No? So sabi niya, kailangan, wala, ito pinakamatin din na dapat iwasan ko. I know nothing which brings the manly mind down from the heights more than a woman's caresses the joining of bodies without which one cannot have a wife. Parang sinasabi ni St. Ni Augustine that according to the legalistic view, binababa ng sex yung dignidad ng isang tao kahit ito ay nasa konteksto ng marriage. Binababa yung dignidad ng tao. Kaya ano sabi ng turo ng simbahan dati? That sex is for procreation only. Narinig niya yan? Procreation. Now, imagine mo, bagong kasal ka, tapos tinanong ka nung nag-i-interview sa inyo sa simbahan, ilang years sa tingin nyo kayo magsasama? Siguro po, 60 years. Kasi ganun po yung buhay ng mga magulang namin. O, mga ilan ang anak ninyo? Anim po ang gusto namin. Tapos yun lang yung dahilan, kaya kayo magsesex for procreation. Six times lang. For 60 years. Mag-aasawa ka pa ba? Mas masarap ng single. Di ba? Hindi <laughs> ka mag-aasawa. So, that's, that's, that's 
the world view of sex. Now let's go to the other one. Ano naman yung isa? The liberal view. Ano naman yung liberal view? Ang liberal view, iba, they viewing sex as something that can fulfill a need. Yung paggutom ka, ano ginagawa mo? Tinagsasabing kumakain. Ay, hindi ka kumakain paggutom. Baka kasi iba dito pag nagugutom, nakatanghod lang doon sa kumakain. <laughs> paggutom ka, kumakain. Parang ganun yon. Yung food is for stomach and sex is for our body. Kaya may, ito yung marinig mo dun sa liberal view about sex. Ito mga salitang ito. Kung film mo, gawin mo. Collect and collect, then select. If it feels good, it must be right. Kung mahal mo ako, patunayan mo. Eh, narinig niyo na yan? May nabola na ba sa inyo dyan? Ah, oh, wag na, wag na, wag na, wag na yung tatanungin ko. Tatanungin ko na lang, sino sa inyo dito? Yung mga lalaki, ha? Kil- kilay na lang, parang hindi makita ng mga babae. Ang maraming nabola sa mga salitang yan. Sige Iba, dalawang, dalawang mata pag gumagano. Eh. Di ba, yun yung nakikita natin. No? What else? <laughs> Parang damit. Try before you buy. Ayan, yan yung view ng liberal. Eh. Ito pa. Gagawa ba si Lord ng hindi good? Now, if you look at it, parang, oh nga, no? parang tama naman. Ha? Gagawa ba si Lord ng hindi good? Now listen to me, friends. If this is the view that God wants us to have, because we believe it is good and we should do it anytime, anywhere, bakit maraming babae ang feeling nila na isan sila? Yung alam mo yun, matapos silang ligawan, matapos silang susungkitin ko, ang langit, susungkitin ko, mga bitwit, e haahalay sa mga paa mo para mapatunayan ko lang mahal mo ako. Ikaw, patunayan mo, mahal mo ako. Tapos pagkatapos nun, ano nangyari? Nagmamahal na ng iba. Tama? So ano nangyari? Wala na. Yung babae, feel na isahan. Bakit maraming tao, feeling nila, may kulang pa rin kahit ginagawa na nila yan with other partners? Bakit maraming tao may sakit? Like, ano ba? AIDS. Diba? Bakit maraming tao may sakit? Bakit kaya may abortion sa Pilipinas? Do you know that there is abortion here in the Philippines? Sino nakakaalam? Sino ang walang pakialam? <laughs> Meron nung sa Pilipinas. Tignan natin yung ginawang survey ng Gutmacher Institute. In 2000, an estimated 78,900 women were hospitalized for post-abortion care. 473,400 women had abortion and the abortion rate was 27 per 1,000 Women, age 15 to 44. The national abortion rate changed little from 1990 to 2000. The large increases occurred in Metro Manila. From 41, again 52 per 1,000. And in Visayas, 11 to 17. So pag tinignan mo, kung tama yung view, bakit merong ganito? If it's good, then why is it that God created something that will hurt me. Nakuha niyo yung sinasabi ko? So if this is not the right view of sex, the legalism and the liberal view, so Brother James, what's the right view of sex? Tanong niyo ako, what's the right view? Brother James. Parang hindi kayo interesado. Parang kulang sa power. Huh? What's the right view? Brother James. Yeah. Here's the right view. The Lord's view. The Lord's view. Not the legalistic view, not the liberal view, but the Lord's view. Now, sino yung tatanungin natin? Si Jesus. Tanongin natin si Jesus in Matthew 19, verse 4 to 5. It says here, Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man 
will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Can you say that? Two will become one flesh. Hindi sinabing the two will remain two, and they will have four. Hindi ka nun. Two will become one. Ano ibig sabihin nun? is pertaining to sexuality. Can I shock you? Yan, kailangan may shock, you know, para talagang ganahan kayo, you know? This is a shocking statement. Yeah. <laughs> Sex is the best gift from God for married people. Yeah. <laughs> Alam mo yung iba dyan? Yung may iba mag-asawa, talaga, woo! <laughs> Pero totoo po yun, ha? Totoo yun. You know, sex is not just for procreation or pleasure or end pleasure. But sex is for permanence. Permanence. If it's done right, it can take your relationship to a different level. It can make your relationship stronger. You know, I believe that sex is the barometer or thermometer in a relationship. Malalaman mo kung yung relasyon nito mag-asawang ito may problema dahil, tingnan mo lang yung kanilang sex life. You know, ang dami kong mga nakakausap talking about their problems in their marriage. And iba talagang in the brink of separation. And there's this one question that I will always ask them. How's your sex life? At alam mo, lagi yan. Pag sinabi nilang, may problema nga po kami. Alam ko na na may problema rin yung relasyon. It's a thermometer. Lahat ng kausapin ko, lahat ng mga pinawantuan ko na mag-asawa. Nalala ko may isang a 50-year-old guy. Sabi niya, kinamusta ko sa ko, how sure? sex life. Hindi, tinanong ko pala siya, how's your relationship? Sabi niya, hindi po okay. Tapos tinanong ko siya, how's your sex life? Sabi niya, almost every day. So, paano niya? Parang, parang sinira yung, di ba, yung aking idea. Sabi ko, paano nangyari yun? May problema ka sa relasyon. Tapos, yung sex life mo, almost every day. Sabi niya, opo. Anong, anong ibig mo sabihin? Yung parang pong almost every Monday, Almost every Tuesday, almost every Wednesday, almost lang po, hindi natutuloy. <laughs> Yan pala, kaka pala almost. Pero it's true, ah, huh? it's true. That's why, that's why here in the feast, we, we have this what we call lux retreat. We keep on inviting you, couple, couples here in Feast Out Mall. And today they have the lux retreat in, in Angels Hills. And in that retreat, we're not just talking about relationship. Alam mo, pag umating ka doon, we're talking more about sexual intimacy. Yung hindi natin pwedeng pag-usapan sa feast, hindi natin pwedeng pag-usapan. Maraming masasak. Maraming masasak. Kaya doon, if you want your relationship to grow, you attend the Lux Retreat. So I'm, in, I'm inviting those couples na hindi pa nakakapag-lux to mag, mag-ipo na kayo for September because we will have another run. I, I think they're, they're planning to have one in May pero hindi pa namin na, natat, natatapos, hindi pa namin napagpaplanuhan. And I'm the one heading it. No? Kaya yung sinasabi ko sa inyo, ganun yung nangyayari doon. So I would like to invite you to be part of that lux retreat. Okay? So that's how we view our our the, the sex in the context of marriage. So, hindi lang siya yung para mapagbigyan. No, it should be something pleasurable. At doon sa context na mag-asawa. And lahat naman tayong katoliko dito, we believe in that. Kaya lang may mga tao magsasabi, kaya lang brother James, hindi ba parang backward looking or backward thinking yung sinasabi mo sa amin? Hindi ba parang makalumang panahon yung sinasabi mo na dapat sa isang partner lang, dapat dito lang, huwag na sa iba, Di ba parang backward looking yan? Kasi iba na yung trend ngayon eh. Narinig niyo na yun? Narinig niyo na? Parang backward thinking, tinuturo ng simbahan. 
na dapat isang relasyon lang. Now, I want you to look at what Paul says to the Corinthians. Ito yung sabi niya, one day, because they asked him about this topic, at ito yung sabi niya, Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relation with a woman, but since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relation with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. And the husband should fulfill his marital duty to the wife and likewise the wife to her husband. You know, during the time of Paul, the people there, you can have sex anytime, you can have sex anywhere, you can have sex to anyone. Ganun yung takbo nung araw. And prostitution is so prevalent. Yung, even, even dun sa templo nila, merong prostitute dun, na gusto mo mag-offer ng worship, pwede. Using the prostitute, prostitute. Sipin mo, it's so prevalent. Now, here's my question to you. Does it sound family? Parang pamilyar. Na, hindi na kuha ng iba. <laughs> Di ba parang pamilyar? Kailan? Sa panahon natin. Tama? So, ano ibig ko sabihin? Ano, ano ibig sabihin ito? Yung ginagawa natin ngayon, yan yung backward thinking. Yung meron ngayon sa paligid natin, that is what in the time of Paul is doing. Bakit backward thinking? Tanong niyo ako, bakit? Kasi si Jesus, nung dumating, nung dumating siya in their lives, Jesus came and He introduced to them the, a new way of thinking on how to look at sexuality. Pinakita niya na ito yung tamang pananaw. Saan natin makikita yan? Let's go back to Matthew. Binasa natin kanina. Sabi niya, haven't you read, He replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them. Alam niyo, merong pinag si Jesus niyan. The reference is in the Old Testament, in Genesis 1, 26-27. And it says here, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that he may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the grounds. Ito yung pinakamaganda rito. So God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Tingin kayo sa akin. Anong gusto sabihin ni Jesus? When Jesus came, He raised how we should view ourselves in the context of sexuality. By telling to us, by telling to you, by telling me our true value. And what is our true value in the eyes of Jesus? Tanong nyo ko, ano yun? That we are created with God's dignity and value in us. Na ikaw may dignidad ka. Na ikaw may value ka. Kaya lang ito, dito nagkakaproblema yung marami. Ang gusto ang sabihin ng purity is this. It is valuing ourselves. It is valuing ourselves. Because God valued us the way He valued His own self. Yung pagtining ng Kanya, sinasabi niya sa iyo, kung ano yung value ko, yun ikaw, ganun ka din. You worship me because I have certain value in your life, ganun ka din. You have my value, you have my dignity. Kaya lang dito nagkakaproblema ang marami. Why? Kasi pumapayag ang, mga, ang iba na ibigay yung sarili nila, yung katawan nila, ng basta-basta. Bakit? Kasi hindi nila nakikita yung value ng sarili nila. Minsan may mga bagay tayo sa bahay na nakakalat. Sino sa inyo may mga kalat sa bahay? Sige na, huwag kayong mahiya. Ano yung mga nakakalat? Mahalaga ba yon? 
Hindi, di ba? Sa amin, yung mga, yung mga pera, kasi walang halaga sa amin, yung nakakalat lang yun doon, ha? So kaya kung wala kayong pera, punta kayo sa bahay, magwalis lang kayo doon. Ay, parang John and Marcia lang, di ba? Pero, di ba yung, yung nakakalat? Walang halaga eh. Pero yung mahalagang bagay, nasaan? Nakatago. Tama, nakatago. Nasaan? Nasa baol, nakasusi. Ang mga walang bagay, nakakalat. Now, allow me to illustrate this so that it will really be drilled into our mind. Imagine, yung lola mo namatay. Tapos yung lola mo, pinamanahang ka ng alahas. Tapos nung makita mo yung alahas, sabi mo, sabi mo, parang luma na tong alahas na ito. Tapos yung mga auntie ko, yung uncle ko, yung pinamana sa kanila, yung bahay at lupa, yung isa, yung kotse na maganda, samantalang ako, lumang alahas. At dahil sa tingin mo, yung lumang alahas na yan, parang walang value. Yung ginawa mo, nilagay mo lang kasama nung ibang nakakalat mong mga fake jewelry. So nilagay mo lang siya doon, kasama. And then one day, sabi mo, kailangan ko ng pera. Kailangan ko, wala akong pamasahe for the whole week. Gawin ko na lang kaya, mapera na lang kaya itong alas na to ni Lola. So kinuha mo, pumunta ka sa phone shop para, para isanla. Yan, kunyari pa kayo, nagsasanla din naman kayo. Kunyari, hindi nyo pa alam. So sinanla yung, sinanla yung alahas. Tapos pagdating mo ron, binagay mo doon sa alahera, tapos tinignan niya, tapos nakita mo yung mata, nanlaki, tapos tinignan ka. Tapos, sandali lang po, pumunta ron sa isang kaibigan ng alahera, yung kasama niya, tapos nagbubulungan. Nagbubulungan, tapos ikaw, sabi mo, pinagbubulungan nila. Bakit kaya sila nagbubulungan doon? Tapos, pagkatapos, sabi nga nung isa, Sir, sandali lang po, pwede ko ba tawagin namin yung expert na kasama namin? Ten minutes lang. Tapos, ten minutes, nag-aantay ka, kinakabahang ka. Bakit? Kasi hindi mo alam, bakit kaya? Ba't kailangan tumag... Baka mamaya, pulis yung tawagin. Baka napagkamal lang ninakaw ko yung alahas. No? Tapos dumating na yung expert, tiningnan. Tapos sabi nung expert, narinig mo, eto nga, lalo kang kinabahan. Sabi mo, lolo ko yata, nagnanakaw nung araw, di ko alam ah. Kinakabahang ka. Tapos dumapit siya at ang tanong sa'yo, saan mo nakuha ito? Ano sasagot mo? Sa labas, nakapulot ko lang ho yan eh. <laughs> Kasi baka mamaya, di ba? Baka mamaya, nakakaw pala yun, dinakulong ka pa. Pero ang sasagot mo, ay, bigay po ng lola ko. Bakit po? Bakit po? Nagdadalawang isip ka. Isa sa laho niya po ito. Sana po, eh, yung gano'n, di ba? Nakakabang kayo. Baka mga pagsagot mo, eh, bigla na lang may posas, di ba? Tapos ang sabi sa'yo, alam niyo ho, matagal na akong hinahanap itong alahas na ito. Kung lalo ka ng tinatako, di ba? <laughs> matagal na akong may naghahanap nito. Alam niyo ho ba, itong alahas na ito, this is a national treasure. Tatlong set yan. May sing-sing, may hikaw, may kwintat. Yung isa ho, nasa inyo, Meron ho nagkukulik niyan, dalawa na sa kanya. At yung isang yan, pag sinanlaho niyo yan, mabubuhay ho kayo. Kahit hanggang tumanda kayo, hindi niyo mauubos yung halaga. Ano sagot mo? Sabi nga ng lola ko. <laughs> Medyo yumabang ka na, di ba? Bakit ba? May value eh. Now, ang tanong, isa sanla mo ba? Isa sanla mo? Ano sasabihin mo? Pag-isipan ko. Pag-isipan ko. Magkano ba? Magkano sabi mo? Pag-isipan ko yan, ha? Iwanan mo muna. Tapos pag uwi mo, ikakalat mo ba siya? Walang makakaalam kung saan mo nilagay. <laughs> Di ba? Bakit? national treasure. It has intrinsic value. Friends, that's purity. That's purity. Yung nagbigay ng value, kaya, nag, di ba, nagbago yung pananaw mo, kanina wala siyang value, pero anong sabi nung, nung expert? Ay, may value yan. Nag-iba yung tingin mo. 
Friends, it's the same with our purity. Purity is agreeing that you are highly valued by God. That you have intrinsic value. Hawak mo kamay ng katabi mo. Yug-yugin mo ng konti. Sabi mo nga sa kanya, may halaga ka. Tanong mo siya, magkano? <laughs> Mabubuhay ba ako dyan habang tumanda ako? Ayan. That's why, this morning, we will dissect one of the story of David, greatest defeat of David. And from his story of defeat, we will try to learn lessons on how to keep our purity. Gusto niyo yan? How to keep our purity. You know, we learn from our successes, but in defeat, in problems, yan yung mga magaling na teacher. That's why we will try to learn lessons from his defeat. Now let's go back to the earlier chapter of 2 Samuel. Kanina yung binasa natin, 2 Samuel 12. Tignan natin, ano yung nangyari kay David in 2 Samuel chapter 11? Bakit nagalit sa chapter 12 ang Diyos kay David? Now let's go back to chapter 11. And it says here, in the spring, at the time when King God, King go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. So si David, tinawag niya yung parang general niya si Joab. Sabi niya, punta kayo sa laban. At siya naiwan siya dun sa, sa palace. Have you noticed? Nasan dapat si David? He should be in the battle. Because during that time, lumalaban yung mga hari. Kasi kasama yung hari sa laban. At pag namatay yung hari, talo na agad kayo So ganun yung labanan during that time. Pero have you noticed, nasan siya? Nasa palace. He was in the comfort of his bed. You know two reasons why he fell? Dalawang dahilan. Una, because he was absent from the battlefield. Wala siya dun sa battlefield. And here's the second reason why he fell. Because he was alone. He was far from his comrade. Ang layo ng mga kasama niya, nag-iisa siya. Alam niyo, may mga kakilala ako na magkikwento sa akin ng kasalanan na gawa nila. Alam mo, ito rin yung dahilan. Because they were absent in the community. They were absent in the church. Kasi mga, mga kakilala akong ganyan. Kasama ko sa... Yung kasama ko, bata pa lang kami. Nag-journey sa Panginoon. Tapos ngayon, iba sa kanila, wala na. Why? Kasi they left the church. And here's the second reason, because they're alone. Mag-isa lang. Kaya anong nangyayari? Ang bilis mahulog. Now from this verse, we will learn four lessons this morning. The first lesson is this. If you want to keep your purity, we have to learn from this Bible verse. At the time when kings go up to war, David remained in Jerusalem. Here's the first lesson. Always be in a battle. Can you say that loud? Friends, you cannot relax because the evil never relaxes. Dapat nasa mindset mo lagi that you are in a battle. Yung temptation, andyan lagi yan. Kaya dapat aware ka. May kaibigan ako, hindi ko nasasabihin sa inyo yung pangalan. Bo Sanchez. <laughs> the story niya to. Actually, if you watch the video PICC, ito yung maririnig mo. Isang araw, he was doing something in his office. Bata, bata, bata pa siya eh. May ginagawa siya, nagsusulat siya. And then suddenly, he heard a knock. Pinagbukas niya, pinagbuksan niya. Tapos pagpasok, nakita niya, babae, ang ganda, ang puti, ang kinis, haba ng buhok, ang pango, pero umiiyak. At ang sabi sa kanya, Brother Bo, sabi niya yung boyfriend ko, iniwan ako, sinaktan niya ako, binigay ko lahat, pero ngayon iniwan na ako, may iba na. Umiiyak, umiiyak. Pero dito siya nagulat. Bigla na lang umakap sa kanya. Umakap. 
Pero brother Bo, ikaw talaga ang gusto ko. Inakap siya. Buti na lang, alam mo, si Bo, yung ginagawa niya, he was making his talk for that afternoon. Kasi may talk siya pag, pagdating ng hapon doon sa isa sa community nila. Sabi, naalala niya, sabi niya, may talk ako mamaya. Anong kagawin ko pag, pag nag-give in ako dito? Ano yung mukhang ihaharap ko doon sa mga members ko? Anong ginawa niya? Tinulak niya yung babae. Nung kinikwento niya doon, pag-isip ako, sabi ko, Kasi sa akin nangyari yun, patay. <laughs> Kasi, di ba sabi ko sa inyo, ma- maawain ako. <laughs> Ngayon, pag may umiiyak, gusto kong pasayahi. Yung ganun. <laughs> Tapos, eto yung, eto yung, yung babae, hindi pa rin nagpatumigil. Inakap pa rin siya. Si Bo, tinulak niya. Inakap, tinulak na niya. And this time, sabi niya, you go out. You go out. Tapos, nasis niya palabas ng pinto, pinagbukas, lumabas yung babae, sinara yung pinto. At pagkasara niya, sabi niya, sayang. <laughs> Totoo yan. <laughs> Totoo yan. Sabi niya, sayang. Kasi medyo bata-bata pa siya eh. Oh, sayang. But, pero alam mo, after dec- decades, alam mo, sabi niya, Anya, papasalamat ako, hindi ako nahulog. Nagpapasalamat ako, I was protected by the grace of God because I'm doing His work. He was serving God. Sabi niya, kung lalaglag ako doon, baka yun yung napangasawa ko at hindi ko na mapapangasawa si Maro. Grabe. Grabe. But, take note of this. I'm not saying it's a full proof that when you serve God, hindi ka magkakasala. Hindi ko sinasabi yan, ha? But if you are serving God, you will have something to protect you. Mapoproteksyonan ka kahit paano. Yung mag- magkakasala ka, sabi mo, kakahiya o. Oh. Servant ako. Ay, kakahiya o. Oh. Preacher ako. Ang hirap na na. Yung mag-preach ka sa harap ng mga tao, tapos may kasalanan ka. Mahirap. Mahirap. That's why I encourage you to serve with us. Mag-serve kayo kasama dito sa Peace Out Mall. Yung... Kunyari, meron sa inyo. Meron ba dito magaling mag-drums? Meron ba dito? And we're looking for drummers. Let's totoo ito, ha? We're looking for drummers. If you know how to play drums or yung anak mo magaling mag-drum, just go to our music ministry and join our ministry. Or magaling kang umiti. Pati nga, pati nga ng mga ngiti ninyo. Ayan, ayan. Mga kailangan namin yan. Yan, mga kailangan kumiti. Na? Dun sa may warm. Ha? You can serve with the warm. Or magaling kumanta. Yung sumasabay sa'yo yung mga aso pag kumakanta ka. Yung mga ganyan. <laughs> Baka pwede ka sa music ministry. Sabi siguro ni Brad, wala akong talent. Pero marunong ka magpunas ng pawis. Kailangan ko tagapunas minsan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Pero you serve. You serve with us. Okay? So that's the first lesson. That's the first lesson. So let's go to the second lesson. Here's the second lesson. Never leave your squad. Can you say that? Never leave your squad. You know, see David, he fell because he was away from his comrades. Ang layo ng mga kasama siya, niya, nag-iisa lang siya. Ang ganda ng sinabi ni Peter, in First Peter 5, it says here, Your enemy, the devil, prowl, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Sino siya yung nakakita na ng leon? Yan. Maliban doon sa asawa mo. <laughs> May sasi, di ba? Parang leon yan. Tapang yan. Alam niyo, nanonood ako doon sa Animal Planet. Doon sa Animal Planet, panukarin niyo ito ha? Yung, yung mga leon or, or the tigers, ang ginagawa nila, they are looking at herds. Kasi y- yung, mga, yung mga gazelle, yung mga giraffe, yung mga yan, yung mga zebras, alam mo magkakasama yan eh, pag lumalakad. Magkakasama yan. Ang leon, ang tigre, alam mo gagawin nila? Pag marami, gagawin niya, hahabuli niya yun. Yung, mga, yung maraming hayop na yan. Tapos, pag, naka, pag merong isang humiwalay, anong ginagawa ng leon? Yun ang tinutugis niya. 
Tinatakot niya muna yung marami. Pag may nahiwala, yun yung tutugisin niya. At maya-maya, may pagkain na siya. Have you noticed that? Naalala ko, meron dalawang magkaibigan. Tapos uh, jungle sila. Tapos may nakita sila, dalawang... May nakita silang leon. So magkaibigan sila. So sila, nung makita ni leon, malapit sa kanila, medyo na-freeze out sila kasi leon to eh. Tapos maya-maya, yung isang kaibigan, yung friend number one, unti-unti bumaba, tapos hinubad yung sinelas niya. Tapos sabi nung isa, sabi niya, ano ginagawa mo? Sabi niya, nagtatanggal ako ng sinelas para mabilis akong tumakbo. Sabi niya, kahit mabilis takbo mo, aabutang ka niyan. Huwag, huwag ka na maghubad, masasakmal ka pa sa ulo. Sabi nung friend number one, ang goal ko, alam mo, hindi talunin sa takbuhan yung leon. Ang goal ko, talunin ka. Dahil pag nahuli ka, lapa ka. Hindi <laughs> ba gano'n yun? Hindi ba na-intindi? Gano'n ba kabilis to? Hindi. Unahan ko lang to, basta inabutan to, takas na ako. Parang gano'n. Gano'n yung kalaban. Pag nag-iisa ka dyan, kanya tutuksuhin. Here's the rule of the jungle. If you are alone, you're dead. Same with our spiritual life. Same in our spiritual life. That's why in the army, you have two circles. You have the platoon and the squad. Ano yung platoon? Yung platoon has a maximum number of about 50 people. Yan yung nasa platoon. Yung parang ganito, yung mga kaibigan mo, kapisina mo, ka-churchmate mo, yan yung platoon. Marami yan. And these people are in your life because you have the same goals or maybe same likes and dislikes. Kaya meron ka niyan. Kaya nandiyan ka sa, sa grupo na yan. Pero kahit gaano kaganda, ka-wonderful yung plato na yan, you need more intimate relationship. At saan yan? Dun sa squad. Sino yung squad? About eight or nine people. These are your safe people. Ito yung mga tao na kilala mo yung values. Kaya parehas kayo. Kaya kayo nagkakasundo. Why? Kasi you have the same values. Kaya kayo dito nagpupunta kayo sa feast. Bakit? At yung, sino yung mga kasama mo? Yung mga amoy Diyos din na katulad nyo. Di ba? Kaya yun naman gusto mong kasama. You have the same values. At hindi lang yan. Kilala ka rin nila. Alam nila yung kahinaan mo, alam nila yung kasalanan mo, alam nila kung sino ka. And despite of all this, mahal ka nila. Tama? That's why these are your safe people. Now here's my question to you. Do you have your squad? Do you have your safe people? Sino sa inyo may safe people? Ayan. Yung mga hindi nagtas ng kamay, I invite you to be part of our squad. You know, ako, I, I have my own squad. I have my family, like you. You have your own squad. Ito yung mga tao na talagang alam yung kahinaan ko. Yung dito sa peace, di ba? Parang bite-bite ni Brother James. Pero alam, alam nila yung kung saan umiinit yung ulo ko. Yung ganyan, alam nila kung kailan ako nagagalit. Yung, that is my family. And the second is my LG, yung life groups ko. I have three life groups under me and I also have my own life groups sa taas. So ito yung mga taong kilala rin ako. Kaya pag nangihina ako, meron akong masasabihan. Nangihina ako ngayon na tutukso ako, tulungan mo ako. I have my safe group. That's why if you don't have your squad, I invite you to be part of our squad here. You can look at our LG sign up there and if you're a couple, we have LGs for you. If you're a single, we have LGs for you. Single parent, we have LGs for you. Be part of our squad. Yes? Tikoy mo ang mo. Sabi mo sa kanya, join the squad. So that's the second lesson. Now let's go to the third lesson. And this is the third lesson. Defeat the enemy while he is a small. Defeat the enemy while the enemy is still small. Let's go back to what Samuel 11 says. From the roof, see David, he was in the roof. He was looking at the houses, kasi mataas yung bahay ng hari. And he saw a woman baiting. Naliligo. 
the woman was very beautiful and David sent someone to find out about her. And the man said, she is Bathsheba. Sabi ko, sakto ah, naliligo, Bathsheba. Siguro kung nagsashower, shower Sheba, baka ganun ang pangalan nito. Ano? Pero, tapos ang sabi sa kanya, the daughter of Iliam and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Ito yung pagkakamali ni David. Sana nung nakita niya si Bathsheba, sana dun pa lang tinapos na niya. Or nung nakita niya si Bathsheba at natutokso siya, sana kinuha niya yung cellphone niya, iPhone 10, iPhone X, at tinawagan niya yung asawa niya at sinabi niya, ha, natutokso ako. Sana ganun ang ginawa niya. Kaya lang ang ginawa niya, iba yung ginawa niya, kinuha niya yung cellphone niya, and instead of tawagan yung asawa niya, ang ginawa niya, pinicture yung naliligo. No? Parang, Lord, ganda nitong creation mo, makunan nga. Yung parang ganun. <laughs> ganun yung ginawa niya. Kaya ano nangyari? Nagkasala. Married people, can I see the hands of married people? Tapos nga kamay. Sabi niya, Woo! Do not entertain temptation. Yung pag natutokso ka, gamitin mo yung technology, tawagan mo yung asawa mo. O kaya text mo, Han, kumusta ka na? Yung ganun, para dun pa lang, medyo meron ang hahatak sa'yo. May protection ka na. May isang lalaki, sabi niya ganun. Pumunta doon sa pare, sabi niya, Father, forgive me kasi natutokso ko. Ang daming temptation. Sabi ng pare, did you entertain the temptation? Kasi pag hindi mo naman in-entertain, hindi naman kailangan i-confess. I'm taking moral theology now. Ha? Yung temptation is not a sin. Hindi siya kasalanan. Pero pag nag-act ka, dun sa temptation, yun yung kasalanan. Kaya hindi mo kailangan i-confess sa father, natukso ako, hindi mo kailangan i-confess yan. Kasi hindi yun kasalanan. So sabi ng pare, did you entertain the temptation? Sabi niya, no father, no. But it entertains me. So, pag may asawa ka, natukso ka, try to call your wife. Or try to call your daughters or your children. Para, alam mo yun, para pagkausap mo sila, para pag nagkasala ako, ito yung masisira. You have something that will protect you. Nalala ko when I was working with Bir na Bir. Dati kasi akong route salesman. Nakawin ko na ba yung date sa inyo? Nagdadrive ako ng six-wheeler truck. Yung nakikita nyo sa makarasada, malalaking sasakyan, malaking truck ng beer. Yan yung trabaho ko nun. In the morning, I'll go out and go to the area where I deliver the beer. Pero hindi ako talaga yung driver. Ako ay order taker. So pupunta ako doon sa mga, doon sa mga tindahan, doon sa mga dealers, and I will ask their orders. Yun, tapos yung pahinante ko, sila yung magbababa. Sabi nung kaibigan ko. Kasi alam nila, ano ako eh, Christian ako. So sabi niya, James, mag-ingat ka. Sabi ko, bakit? Kasi yung ruta mo, yung ruta mo, in tagig, tagig yun eh. Sabi niya, maraming tukso dyan. Sabi ko, pa- paano maraming tukso? Marami dyan na mag offer sa iyo ng sarili nila. Oh, sabi ko, oh, ingat ka, ingat ka. So my first week, baba ko ng truck, Punta ako dun sa mga tindahan, kuha ako ng order. And then there's this one store na ilang beses akong tumatawag, Tao po! Tao po! Wala siya mga sagot. Tao po! Tapos may lumabas. Parang nakahubo. <laughs> Kasi, yung babae nakatapis. Nakatapis lang ng tuwalya. Yung, yung maikli lang. Yung parang kunting tumaas na ganun. Kita mo na, yung, yung ganun. Tapos sabi niya, ah, bakit po? Sabi ko, ah, I'm James Nicholas, and ako yung bagong ru- ahente rito sa ruta na to. Sabi ko, what's your name? So hinanap ko yung files niya sa pangalan. Yung pangalan nito sa files kasi meron silang mga utang sa amin na basyo. Sabi niya, ang pangalan ko ganito. So hinanap ko. Tapos, ah, sabi ko, anyway, ako na huwag ruruta rito. Sabi ko, pasensya na kayo ha, na-storbo pa ko kayo, naliligo pala kayo. Tapos alam mo, sabi niya, gusto mong maligo? 
Nandito ba si Jinky? Lumabas, abutin naman. Kasi ba, may pag nakita niyong ginugulpi niya ako doon, hindi niya alam to eh. No? Nung sinabi niya yon, napahinto din ako. Napahinto rin ako. Pero alam mo, buti na lang. Buti na lang. I was heading a small group in my previous community. Alam mo, sabi ko sa kanya, nung sinabi niya, tinanong niya, gusto mo maligo? Sabi ko, nilagnat ho ako ngayon eh. Sa susunod na lang ko. Tapos iniwan ko na. Inipunta ako doon sa truck ko. Doon sa truck. Tapos pagdating ko rin sa truck ko. Sayang. Pero ang hirap eh. Ang hirap. Pero buti na lang. Buti na lang. I was able to to fight the temptation. Kasi kung hindi, baka hindi ko asawa si Jinky at yung tatlo, ay, hindi ko na asawa si Jinky no? at yung mga anak ko galit na sa akin. So friends, if you are in the temptation, try to find a way to protect yourself. No one can protect you. Only you can protect yourself. Do everything to protect your purity. Now, ito naman ang tips ko sa mga girlfriend and boyfriend. Tapos nga kami ng mga girlfriend and boyfriend dito. Sabihin nyo, Woo! Parang ayaw nyo magtaas ng kamay, no? Ito ang sabi ng, ni David. He's the writer of Song of Solomon in 2.7. It says here, Do not arouse or awaken love until it is so desired. Do not arouse or awaken love until it is so desired. Kung hindi ka pa ready, Do not awaken the desire. Avoid being alone together. Avoid as much as possible kissing. Yung Brother James, ano ulang naman? Pwede na yung ulang naman. Kasi yung problema dyan, pagkatapos ano o, saan susunod? Sa pisngi. Tapos mamaya sa leeg. Tapos mamaya sa paa. Yun, ganon. <laughs> Mula ulo hanggang paa. <laughs> Doon nagsisimula yan eh. Doon magsisimula. Otherwise, ito mangyayari sa'yo, ha? Pag hindi mo sinubukan, iwasan yan, ito mangyayari sa'yo. Ito nangyari kay David. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. Doon ang punta niyan. Nung pinanganak si, Jean, si Andrea, nag-iisip ako noon, sabi ko, paano kaya maiwasan itong magka-boyfriend agad. Kasi si Andrea, kaya sa isang babae namin. Eh. Tapos sabi ko, paano kayo maiwasan ito na magka-boyfriend ng bata? Alam mo, naisip ko, ipangalan sa kanya yan, pregnant. <laughs> yung para pag may nag-introduce sa kanila, hi, I'm mix. Hi, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Medyo safe na, di ba? Hindi <laughs> ko naisip. Hindi eh. ko nagawa. So, di ba? So, iwasan nyo. Friends, remember this. Big sin always starts with small sin. Yung malalaking kasalanan, nagsisimula yan sa isang maliit na kasalanan. So defeat the enemy while he was, or he is still small. Kaya lang iba sa inyo sasabihin, pero Brother James, is it possible now? Is it possible in this sexually perverted time? Is it possible? Natanong niyo na ba yan? Natanong na ba sa inyo ng anak niya? Posible ba yan? Let's look at what the celebra- celebrity tweets about their relationship. Nikki Hill. Sabi ni Nikki Hill, Nobody told me to stay a virgin or because I, I'm a stuck-up prude na huli-huli. It's my choice. I've always been my pride. If sex is something I value, ganun talaga yan. Another girl, Si Yen Constantino. There's no premarital sex. Ganun talaga. No premarital sex. Iyan yung clear na. No to it. Kasi, we want to honor marriage. Kasi ba diba, ang tagal-tagal kang pinipreserve ng magulang mo, nanay mo, papa mo, lahat ng pagalit, pananakot, para hindi ka lumabas ng bahay, pumarti, pero isang iglap lang, it's all gone. Another, si Megan Young, sex is for marriage. That's my belief. You say no if they try to push you. You step away because that person doesn't value you. 
doesn't value the relationship as much. If the guy is willing to sacrifice that, that means a lot. And si iyabilyan niya. I don't look down upon other girls who practice it. It doesn't make them less of a person. Kanya-kanya namang values yan. But personally, I do believe that one should not practice premarital sex. Doon ko naman na-confirm na mahal niya talaga ako. He was very patient. Yes. I mean, it's easy now for me to say because we're married. Now again, my question to you, young people, is it possible? Is it? Friends, it is possible when you believe that you're more valuable than you think you are. Kaya pwede. Huwag ka mga kamay ng katabi mo. Sabihin mo nga sa kanya, kaya mo yan. Sagutin mo nga siya, eh ikaw kaya. And here's the last lesson. Never cover up a defeat. Can you say that? Ito yung nangyari. Nung alaman ni David na buntis, Si Bathsheba, what he did is he called Uriah. At sabi niya kay Uriah, Uriah, umuwi ka sa bahay mo, magpahinga ka kasi pagod ka, grabe yung laban sa battlefield, magpahinga ka, umuwi ka sa bahay. Parang concern, di ba? Pero ang talagang nasa isip niya ito, yung para pag umuwi siya ng bahay, mag-relate siya mag-asawa, then, pag nalaman ng tao na buntis siya, hindi mag-iisip ng iba ang tatay. Yan yung dahilan niya. Pero ito naging problema ni David. Si Uriah, instead of going home, what he did is he slept in the entrance of the palace. Nandun lang siya, nagbantay. Why? Kasi they are in war. Kaya kailangan ready siya. So hindi mo yun ang bahay, nandun sa palace, nagbabantay. And to cut the long story short, ito yung ginawa ni David in verse 14 to 15. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah in it. He wrote, put Uriah out in front where he or where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw from him, so he'll, he will be struck down and die. And ang ginawa ni David? He killed Uriah. Hindi siya mismo, but because of that action of putting him in front of the battlefield, tapos pinaalis yung mga ibang kasama niya, pinatay ni David. Friends, if you cover up sin, sin will get even bigger. I invite you to stand. Meron ako isang kaibigan. He's also a church leader, a, a preacher. And yung anak niya, babae, may pinagdaanan. At itong babae, because, siyempre, mga magulang, ganyan, di ba? Ingatan mo yung sarili mo, do not give yourself, yung ganyan, eh. we're reminding yung mga anak natin. So, yung anak niya, committed sin against her body. Binagay niya yung sarili niya doon sa guy. So, tapos na-realize niya, mali yung ginawa nila. Kasi, that girl is also serving in their community. So, ang bigat sa kanya. So, punta siya rin sa mga kaibigan niya, mga kasama niya doon, yung kanilang safe group. Tapos sinabi niya doon, yung ginawa niya, yung kasalanan niya. And the safe group, buti na lang, maayos yung safe group. At nasabi sa kanya, you go to your dad. Mag, magsabi ka doon. Magsabi ka. Pero sabi niya, baka mag sa akin, baka saktan ako. That's the consequence. You go to your dad. Kilala mo naman yung tatay mo. So he went to the dad and habang nag-uusap sila, kita niya yung tatay niya, umiyak, umiiyak. Habang sineshare niya, kasi pag, lagi sinasabi sa kanya, ingatan mo sarili mo, wait for marriage, yung ganyan. And he's the head of, of a community. So, ang hirap. So iyak yung tatay. Tapos maya-maya, na matapos na siya magkwento, yung tatay, ginawa inakap yung anak 
At ang sabi ng tatay, okay lang yan anak. Ang importante, natuto ka sa pagkakamali mo. At ito na lang ang tandaan mo. Hindi magbabago ang halaga mo dahil sa isang pagkakamali. Akap sila mag-ama, crying together. And now, the daughter, she learned her lesson. Mayroon siyang boyfriend, pero she's not giving herself to the guy. Now, why am I sharing this to you? Friends, you might be like that daughter. Yung, you committed premarital sex and you don't want to do it anymore because you know that it's not the way of purity. Or you might be like that daughter who committed adultery. And you want to change your life. You want to make it right this time. Can I suggest something? Can I? If you're Catholic, confess your sin to a priest. Punta ka sa simbahan. You know, that's, that's the beauty of our Catholic faith. Yung sa iba, they don't want that. Eh. Pero sa atin, we have it. Na, alam natin, makasalanan yung, yung pare. Pero ang ganda nun eh, yung pupunta ka sa pare because it's an action na talagang parang sinasabi mo, I'm, I'm really sorry. So you go to a priest. Or you go to your friends, your safe group. One, two, or three of them and you confess your sin. You know, I, I like what James says in the early Christian church. Ang sabi niya, therefore confess your sin to each other. Now, bakit na sinasabi na you confess your sin? Alam niyo kung bakit? Because it's exposing what you've done wrong. Hindi para pag-chismisan. Hindi. Ito yung dahilan. As long as the sin is in darkness, you know, that sin is stronger. And because it's stronger, it can grow bigger. But when you expose it to the light, sin will lose its power over you. Mawawala na siya ng kapangyarihan. And many times, the devil, the evil one, will use that sin, that particular situation where you fell, to remind you that you have, you're not worth You, you, don't, you do not have worth. Wala kang value kasi nagkamali ka. No. That's why you need to expose. Why? So that wala na siyang power. Kasi ginagamit ng kalaban sa atin yon. But more importantly, this is what I want you to do. More importantly, you go to Jesus. Because He's the only one who can wash you He's the only one who can purify you. He's the only one who can fix you. And He's the only one who can say to you, Okay lang yan, anak. Ang importante, natuto ka sa pagkakamali mo. At tandaan mo, siya lang ang makapagsasabi nito sa iyo, na hindi nagbabago ang halaga mo dahil sa isang pagkakamali. Dahil sa mata ng Diyos, you're more valuable than you think you are. So you go to Him. You go to Jesus. Bow down your heads. Close your eyes. Maybe you're like that daughter and you want to make it right. I want you to come to Jesus. Confess your sin to Him. And He's telling you today, importante natuto ka at hindi magbabago ang value mo dahil sa isang pagkakamali because your value is like that of God He created you with dignity He created you with great value let Him tell you today of your value in God's eyes. Father, we come before you this morning. We want to be pure.
That's why we keep on attending the feast because we want to change our ways. But there are weaknesses in us. Situations, Father, that sometimes we feel weak. That's why today we come before you and we ask you with the power of your Spirit to give us the strength to say yes in living in purity. Change us, O oh God. Thousand times I have your mercy remains. God, I stumble again, so I'm caught. surrender to you our dreams, our prayers and together with this Lord our desire to live in purity. We want to follow you. We want to follow you good. We want to be like you. That's why we come before you today and we surrender this to you. And I believe that one day all of us here, one day will be like you Jesus. And we pray this. We claim this in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
my heart and my soul. I give you control. Consume me from the inside. Tell them you're valuable than you think you are. Are you blessed today? Parang kami nagalit doon. Let's just sit for a moment. prepare for love offering, let's listen to some of our announcements. Can I see a raise of hand to all the women around here? Can I see a raise of hand? Yeah. So for our announcement, we have the women of worth. So women of worth is on March 23 to 24. It's Saturday and Sunday. Montserrat Center for Religious Formation. Investment fee is 3,600 pesos only. So you can contact Sister She, she 0905512-2786. Or you can go outside and inquire at our book table. Thank you, Mix. Again, I would like to invite all of you to this retreat that we gave for family ministries like couple, singles, like this one. Kasi may mga pinag-uusapan doon na hindi pinag-uusapan sa feast. Na medyo mas medyo delikado. So, I invite you to attend this retreat. Okay? And this morning, we have 170. The first session. The second session, we have 710. So that's about 880. Parang kakaunti, dumating yun, ano? Purity kasi pag-uusapan. Just kidding. But this is something that you can also help out the young people around you with. So, kaya kahit medyo, alam mo yun, tabu, we need to discuss this in the, in the church. Okay? And one more thing. Sino dito yung mga I give member? Tapos nga kami po ng mga I give member. Ayan, yung mga nag I give. Gusto kong pasalamatan ulit kayo because Di ba niyo napansin, lumiwanag dito sa lugar? Napansin niyo ba? Uh, because we installed another four LED floodlights. Napansin niyo? Tapos alam niyo ba, doon sa mga anak natin, doon sa kabila, meron din ganyan, apat na ganyan, pinagpalagay tayo. Kaya maliwanag na ho doon. And again, it's because of our iGivers. Yung kinuha natin yan doon sa iGive fund. So palakpakan natin yung mga iGive members. That's why if you want to join the I Give 
please visit our table he- there sa labas. Yung nandun sa paglabas yung may table doon and inquire about it and support our other uh, funding needs here in Peace South Mall. Let's all stand. Ay, sandali, sandali lang, sandali lang po. May, dahil Valentine's, kasi nak- nakita ko nina marami na lungkot. Meron kaming prepare ng konti. So this time, for this is for per family na lang. Tayo na lang yung member ng family ninyo and we have some gift for you. Ayan. Sige, bigay na natin sa kanila. Per family na lang. Okay. Happy Valentine's from Peace South Mall. Next week, we will have a big day, and I'll be giving a talk on relationships. So invite your friends, mga pamilya na, kaibigan ninyo, for our big day. This is the last talk for the series. Na bless ba kayo sa series? God is good. You can watch this, huh? in our YouTube channel. May pinot up, pinot up kaming YouTube channel ng Fee South Mall. You can watch this HD on YouTube. We have also yung ating live stream. Meron pa din tayo. This is on our Facebook. Okay? So you can watch this again. Let's all stand, friend, and allow me to pray for your giving. Again, I thank you for supporting Fee South Mall. And again, I encourage you to to continue giving more because ang ating expenses dito ay nanggagaling lang sa giving ng mga tao. So please continue supporting our peace. And rest assured that we're praying for you. Panalangin namin pagpalain kayo lahat ng gusto so that we can continue His work here in Peace South Mall. Let's raise our tithes and offering and allow me to pray for your giving. Father, we thank you for your words today. We thank you for reminding us of our dignity, of our value in your eyes. It's true that our value is in you. That's the reason why you came to earth, just to show us our value by giving your life to us, by dying to us, for us. And you've been faithful to us, oh God. You've been blessing us. That's why this morning, we would like to return back to you in our small is our small way this gratitude and we pray that you use this giving you use this tithe this offering so that your work will continue in this place and father i lift up to you my friends today as they give their tithes and offering lord alam mo yung mga pangailangan nila sana tong darating na linggo you open opportunities for them Opportunities, Lord, for healing, opportunities for work, opportunities for financial provisions, for tu- opportunities, oh God, in fixing their relationship. Whatever it is, Lord, that they need, I pray that this coming week, opportunities will open to them. And I pray, oh God, that this coming week, you also use them in their own special way on how to bring your love to the people around them in their workplace schools and wherever they are going, oh God, use them. Bless our people. And all this we pray. All this we claim. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come friends, with joy, let's give our tithes and offering to Jesus. And see you all next Sunday.